Hi, I've got this device and I've programmed it with ARM assembly code. In front of me I have a bunch of registers. These registers are memory mapped to components inside this device. When I write a data, data value to one of these registers, it performs I.O. in the device and it plays a note. So for example, in front of me I have a computer program written in ARM assembly. I'm going to run this program, but before I do, let's look at this device in a bit more detail. So an ARM CPU has 13 general purpose registers. It starts at R0, and that's middle C on this device, and then it goes up to the other octave C, and that's register R12. Conveniently on this device, from this C up to this C, I can use the black and white keys by writing data to register R12 up to 12. If I want to play another key, for example that E, I would need to load its memory address and then I would need to use memory indirection to write data to that place in memory so that that memory mapped key will play the key E. So we don't have memory, we don't have many registers to play with in an ARM CPU, so we'll need to do a lot of memory indirection if we want to play interesting things with this device. So this is our computer program. It's called Maple Leaf Rag, and the computer programmer was a guy called Scott Joplin. We start at the entry point, which is this instruction here, and we move it along to each new instruction. The CPU has a clock frequency. That might be 100 megahertz, it might be a gigahertz. The faster the clock frequency, the more quickly we can move on from executing one instruction to the next. To know where we are in the program, we have a program counter. The program counter is a register, and it moves along to the next instruction, so it's pointing at the memory address to execute the next instruction. We move along, and then we move down to the next line. Eventually, we get to the bottom of this page. Now, this developer, Scott Joplin, wanted this program on this page to be executed exactly twice before moving on to the second page. And we're going to implement this with branching and comparison. So let's move down to the bottom of this program. And you can see here that we have, when the program counter moves along, we have a comparison that we perform, an instruction. And that's going to compare against the constant one, against the counter for the number of times we've executed this page. So when we do the comparison, those numbers are not equal, 1 and 0, but we have a branch if equal, and we would branch to part 2, which is this label here, pointing to this bar. However, this comparison is not equal, so we do not perform the branch, so the program counter simply moves on to this next instruction, and we then execute these instructions. The last instruction here is an unconditional branch, so this is saying you must branch back to the label start, which is the entry point to the program. So the program will run again, and then along will come the program counter. And then this time when we perform the comparison, so having in incremented our counter, this comparison will compare one with one. The branch, if equal, will therefore indeed branch to part two, which is this label here, and it won't run these instructions here. So what will happen is the program counter will come along, it will execute the comparison, then it will execute the branch, and then it will skip over that bar and it will continue executing from this instruction and then move on to the second page. So we're now going to run this program. We're going to run with a fairly slow clock frequency, so the program will take a long time to run. We're going to start at the program counter's position. The program counter is pointing to this first instruction where the start label is telling us is the entry point. So let's start with a fairly slow clock frequency and run the program. That part was using only the general purpose registers in this ARM CPU register 0 up to R12. If I want to run all of this program, I will need to use memory indirection by loading in the memory addresses for these other memory locations where they are also memory mapped to the I.O. inside this device 
And so if I was to use memory and direction to play this key E, then it will play the sound in the device. So now what we'll do is use a few more keys, so using a lot of memory reads and a lot of memory indirection to play the first page of this program.